Today we'll be talking about equivalence relationship. And like always, let's try to understand this with a simple example. So say we have a class of six students, A, B, C, D, E, F, and we want to split them in two different groups. And that splitting, that splitting cannot be random. That splitting should be based on some common property, which means that the elements in one group should all have that some common property. And now if I'm trying to split height wise, and I know that A is taller than B is taller than C, then one idea that comes in my mind is if I take the relation is taller than and I club all of these three elements under it, so it becomes A, B, C, and we can see that by this relation, I can just pick out A and B, and we can say that A is taller than B. So it is valid, it works. But is that it? Because here order shouldn't matter, like they're all just elements in a group. So what if I pick out B comma A? Then it doesn't work because B is not taller than A, as we know that A is taller than B. So B comma A doesn't work. And also another thing to think is that A is also an element in the group. So I can pick A with itself also. And we see that A is also not taller than A itself because they're going to be of the same height. So even that doesn't work. Now we have to think what can be a relation where these things can be taken care of. And now another fact that we know is that D, E and F are of the same height. So a new relation that I'm trying to form is, say, is same height as. Now let's put all of these three elements, D, E, F, in that group. Whereas other group of A, B, C simply becomes is not the same height as. And now let's do the same checks and balance that we try to do, do here. And let's pick out any two elements, say D, comma E. And we can see that D is same height as E, so this is valid. Again, the order shouldn't matter in a group because they're just elements in a group and we can pick out any two elements. So let's say we pick out E and T now. And since D is equal to E in comparison of height, then E is also equal to D when I'm talking about height. So E comma D is also valid. Let's take out the same example if we take D with itself. Now, D is also the same height as itself, so this is also valid. And for the last check balance, we can see D and F also. Now, we can see that D is same height as E is same height as F, so this is also valid. And now, this is definitely a group on some property. And what we can say is, all the elements in this relation are equivalent to each other. And that is exactly why we call it an equivalence relation. So let's formally discuss what an equivalence relation is and what are the different properties of it. So an equivalence relation would have to satisfy three properties. And let's look at what those properties are. So we have the properties of equivalence relation. The number one property is reflexive. Now reflexive in general means turned back on itself. And this is exactly what the definition is that any element A relates to itself. So mathematically we write it as if there is any element A belonging to the set A on which the relation is defined, then A comma A should belong to the relation. Which means that A relates to A on the relation. Right? And let's treat this with an example. So we have, suppose a relation defined as is equal to on the set A of natural numbers. And let's take A as any element or any natural number on the set of natural numbers. Now, any natural number would be equal to itself. So I can simply write that A is equal to A. Or if I have to word it out, I can write A is equal to A. And this is what the relation is. So A is linked with A on this relation on the set A of natural numbers, right? So this is what we write as, as A comma A should belong to R. And here I took A as any element, any natural number. So this is valid for all natural numbers. And since every natural number is equal to itself, does A comma A belonging to R? For all A belongs to A, and hence this relation is reflexive. The second property, the equivalence relationship should satisfy, is 
it should be symmetric which means that if any element a relates to b then b should also relate to a if i have to write it mathematically it would be if a comma b belongs to r this is just simply what this lines mean so a relates to b relates is the relation r and a relating to b is written as a comma b belonging to the relation r so this is just what this line is so a comma b belongs to r should imply that b comma a also belongs to r and again to get a proper understanding let's take the help of an example so let's take the relation is sibling of now let's take a and b as siblings and i'm saying that if a is a sibling of b so let's still let's just think of it this way that if you have a brother then you're also your brother's brother you're also a brother's sibling if you have a sibling your sibling sibling that is you so this directly implies that b is also a sibling of a and that is true for all cases and when i'm saying that a is a sibling of b i'm writing it as a comma b belongs to r so when i'm writing b is a sibling of a which is the relation is sibling of then i write it as b comma a belongs to r belongs to the relation and since this fact is implying this fact also we call this relation as also symmetric because if a is a sibling of b then b is also a sibling of a plus this relation is also symmetric and let's look at the last property in equivalence relation so satisfied that is transitive which is when a relates to b and b relates to c then a should also relate to c and we saw how we write this mathematically do you know it a relates to b has a comma b belongs to r and b comma c belongs to r then with both of this information it should also imply that a comma c should belong to r and let's take an example so we take the relation is greater than on the set a of real numbers right and we say that a b c let them be any real numbers such that a is greater than b and b is greater than c so that both of these two information is correct because when a is greater than b i can say that a comma b belongs to r and when b is greater than c i can say that b comma c belongs to r and if i have to write it mathematically i'll write a is greater than b b is greater than c and if we take both of them together we'll write a is greater than b is greater than c and if we ignore b right now we can simply see that a is greater than c and when a was greater than b i wrote it as a comma b belongs to r so when a is greater than c i can simply write it as a comma c belongs to r so from this two information it implied that this should also follow so a relates to b b relates to c also gives out that a relates to c so this relation also becomes transitive and that is the three properties that an equivalence relation should satisfy so that's all about equivalence relation thank you